Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to Let's Play Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. Uh, like I said at the end of the last episode, we've returned to Ashina Castle. And now we can see that time has passed in the world. Uh, it's a little bit closer to sunset now. And before we start another procession of dialogue, there's something adjacent to the castle that I have to take care of. Uh, two things, actually. One ties into uh, the Dragon Rot mechanic that I promised to show, but that's not all. There's uh, a, a smaller secondary thing. Eh, it'll tie into the first, actually, now that I think about it. And we'll see that in really just a quick moment. We have to dispatch with these two. There is another side path there that actually leads to... Uh, the main area that we're going to be exploring pretty soon. The next main area. Uh, and then this route here, which takes us to another idol. Game is lousy with Sculptor's idols. And a really convenient Dragon's Blood droplet in case we haven't gotten any before. Uh, but we have. We've picked up two or three by now. Can get a nice lay of the land. Uh, this densely layered vertical castle area. So, told those morons to give it a rest. But they don't. They just keep sending more. Such a pain in my... Uh, you one of them Nightjar cronies? No. Uh, of course not. There's something different about you. But I'd say you're in the same line of work. The name's Black Hat Badger. What's yours? <laughs> Real sociable one, aren't we? First this stubborn lot, now a down in the dumb shinobi, and then those Ashina boys raising hell outside. Could this day get any better? You're a fugitive. Something like that, sure. By the by, I'm a little out of pocket these days. Got the goods, but no one to sell them to. Been waiting for someone like you to show up. He sells two things that I want. Uh, this, an iron fan made in the West, and the anti-air death blow text. The anti-air death blow text is what I've been waiting for to fight this Shichiman warrior. So this is going to create a shield for us. A much better shield than what we get just uh, holding, holding our blade up and hoping it deflects whatever comes at us. Uh, in fact, especially when upgraded, I think this becomes one of the strongest prosthetic tools in the game. Uh, and then we'll also clear the rest of his inventory out. <laughs> Hear about this one? Rats have been swarming into Ashina Castle these days. You know the ones I mean. But there's this hell-bent old-timer cutting them up like it was nothing. Was he wearing a Tengu mask? Oh, so you did see him. Yes. We spoke. <laughs> well, ain't you just full of surprises? I'm impressed he let you keep your head. <laughs> right, you know that. I hadn't heard. Oh, is that at the big castle gates where the Gyobu demon fellow was? There's a watchtower on the side near Serpent Valley. You should find the old bastard there. You were well informed. Well, that's because I take a keen interest in saving my own skin. That old geezer. I got a feeling he don't discriminate between badgers and rodents. Well, thanks to your patronage, I'm a wealthy man. Enough to make arrangements, at least. Thinking I may be leaving soon. Where to? Senpo Temple up on Mount Kongo. There's all sorts of rats around here these days. Got a feeling things are gonna get real ugly real soon. So, it's about time I tied up some loose ends. In other words, I'm closing up shop. <laughs> Rats have been you know that. So spending all of our money, or as much as we could on his inventory, even the stuff that we didn't really need or want, accomplishes two things. It gets Badger to move shop to Mount Congo, uh, and it means we'll lose less Sen when we die repeatedly coming up, which is my plan. 
Uh, I'm going to take some intentional deaths here after we scour the area just a little bit more. I don't think there's anything important left, but just in case there is, let's take a quick look around. And the reason we're going to be dying repeatedly is because of Dragon Rock. Again, I promised to show that off, and we're going to, but if I keep going at the rate I'm going, we're never going to see it, so I have to die intentionally here. <laughs> Uh, so, a few characters have referenced Dragon Rot. The Dragon's Blood Droplets reference it. What is it? Well, when you die repeatedly and you res at a shrine, and if I'm lucky, it'll only take this one death, and I might even receive Unseen Aid. Come on. Nope. Gotta die again. Hopefully, it doesn't take multiple times, otherwise, I'm gonna be cutting in a moment. Uh, so again, hey, if you... You didn't see a little huh? scoundrel come running through here, did you? We're after one, and I'm fairly sure he came this way. Hmm. What was he wearing? He had a black hat on. Short little guy. Hmm. Thing is, nobody's passed this way at all. The only thing that did look like some kind of animal. A raccoon? Maybe a badger? Couldn't say for sure. You sure you didn't mistake that animal for your criminal? Aw, oh, come on! Ah, forget it. Weird, I did not know about that dialogue. Uh, again, if you repeatedly die in res of a shrine, and that's the important part, is that combat res does not cause dragon rot. It's when you die absolutely and you come back at a shrine, you have a chance of afflicting others with dragon rot. It's essentially abuse of the resurrected powers of the dragon's heritage manifesting in a detrimental, a detrimental way in the world, and it afflicts other characters. Sekiro starts leeching the life from others to resurrect, and we got it. <coughs> so, you're awake. Your death is not your fate. Just yet. <coughs> Rod Essence Sculptor. Somewhere a pained cough rings out continuously. The man who coughs zealously sculpts statues of Buddha to avoid being consumed by the building flames. Owning this item reduces one's chances of receiving unseen aid. And we also get something similar for the jail mob. So Rot Essence always tells you who has Dragon Rot, and the sculptor is always the first one to be afflicted by it. And after that, which NPC gets afflicted by it is randomized. Most importantly, the effects of Dragon Rot stops you from progressing an afflicted character's quest, and you can also see that my unseen aid chance has gone down. It is not lethal to NPCs, though. And getting Dragon Rot triggers a side quest that's a search for a treatment as well. What's wrong? <laughs> Dragon Rot. The stagnation overflows and spreads a disease that leads eventually to death. What are you talking about? You don't need to worry about me. I'm not normal, you see. It's difficult for me to speak now. Ask Emma about the rest. Ask e So this doesn't count as progressing his quest, so we can still have him craft prosthetics and fit them for us. So we can get him to uh, give us our new umbrella tool. Scott, I don't need your concern. I'm not no me. Oh, that was new. No mere dragon rot will kill me. Because he's not normal, he says. Uh, we also got Fujioka, the info broker, a while back, and he moved here. Hey, it's you. Thanks again for bailing me out back at Ashina Castle. I'm gonna be hanging around here for a while. I need time to sort through all the info I've got. Speaking of which, I'm happy to do business with you anytime. Interested? He sells a couple of useful wares. Uh, nothing that we need immediately. He sells some Dragon's Blood Droplets. 
sells a memo about something called Sabimaru, a Pagoda memo, and an extra gourd seed. So again, nothing that we need right uh, away. So you're looking for goods instead of info, huh? I've always had sticky fingers, I guess. I end up collecting lots without really noticing. I got fed up with all the offerings and memorials, so I left the mob. But when I see a dead body, I can't leave it unpilfered. Besides, property can belong to anyone, right? <laughs> hey, friend. If you go into Ashina Castle, be careful. They've got all kinds of strange ones in there now, and lots of them at that. I know the interior ministers are afraid of Ishinashina, but it looks like they've found their nerve. Tide might be turning for Ashina. That's really important. Hey, friend. If they've got I talk until next The interior ministers are finding their nerve to oppose Ishin Ashina. The interior ministry ninjas are the uh, the purple clad ones that we've been running into. The first one that we ran into was in uh, the Hirata estate in the past. And that lends a little bit more context to who they are and what they're doing. Have you seen the sculptor lately? Yes. He's... All I know is what Dogen told me long ago. That the dragon's heritage can bestow the power of resurrection. However, it is not any ordinary power. Repeated use leads to stagnation, which will eventually reach a point where it overflows. This causes those who do not have the power to become sick. A disease known as Dragon Rot. He knew much about it, but even so, he was unable to determine a cure. Forgive me. Is there a way to treat this Dragon Rot? I do not know. However, it must be stopped. I am unsure, but the first step is to look through my mentor's research and see if I can discover a way. Thank you. She is one of the NPCs we can share the monkey booze with. We're going to save that for a bit. There must be a way to treat the dragon rot. The first step is to look through my mentor's research and... Master Wolf, if your brow is less furrowed, hmm. please. Goodbye. All right, so we also have to speak to Koro in a second. Uh, but actually, yeah, let's do him first, and then we'll go back to the temple and move on that side quest. Wolf, that sword on your back, is it? It is the mortal blade. The sword that can kill those who cannot die. Yes, it was given to me by the divine child of the rejuvenating waters. At Sempo Temple. The Divine Child of the Rejuvenating Waters? The monks at Sempo Temple abandoned the ways of their faith in pursuit of immortality. The result is those who have false dragon's heritage, known as the Divine Children of the Rejuvenating Waters. A false dragon's heritage. I never would have thought. Wait, Divine Children? Yes, many were created, but only one survived. Further proof of the corruption this power brings to man. With the mortal blade in hand, I can now be made to bleed. We are one step closer to creating the Fountainhead Incense. The ties of immortality must be severed. Yes, my lord. I see you've gathered some of the ingredients. Keep up the good work. You're leaving, Wolf. My lord. So we only have one more step in this part of the main quest. Uh, and then as for the Dragon Rot treatment side quest, uh, we're gonna go progress that by going back to the temple. And hopefully that will cause Emma to move. And if it doesn't, then we're just gonna move along. Looks like she is here though, good. What are you doing? Hmm? Oh, I didn't realize you were here. The sculptor has been coughing blood. I took a sample of this blood for my dragon rot research. A sample of his blood? Yes, blood that he's coughed up. The color of the blood itself appears to be tainted, stagnant, but the sculptor's blood alone isn't enough to reach any conclusions. Is there anything I can do? Yes, 
bring me samples of blood coughed up by others that suffer from the dragon rot. If I have more, I'll be able to learn more about the disease. If I come across anyone afflicted by the dragon rot, I'll ask them. Thank you. Goodbye. For my reason, I need you to find me. I'll see what thing. So we now need to go to the jail mob to get a blood sample to continue this. <coughs> You're here too. It's so busy here today. Sculptor. I don't need your concern. I'm not, nor no mere dragon rot will kill me. There's that line that we almost missed the first time. He is not normal. No mere dragon rot will kill him. Okay, so we've started the first... Uh, we've actually progressed the first leg of Black Hat Badger's quest, which moves him to Mount Congo, which is why we didn't immediately start back up there to do Kataro's uh, side quest and the old ladies and the thing with the kite. Uh, there's still another reason why we're going to hold off and going back to Mount Congo for the moment. I'm glad you've come. For my reason, I need you to find Oh, nope. she has moved back here after that scene. Uh, but there is nothing new for her to say. I see you've gathered. Keep up the... So we've done Black Hat Badgers. We've uh, gotten a ways into the treatment side quest. We're almost there. Yes. Do what must be done. Hmm. Oh, come on. This has to be the one. I see you've gathered. Keep up the good. Motherfucker! You're leaving, Wolf. My lord. There's a pretty important line of dialogue that you can eavesdrop off of Kuro, but he is being so obstinate about it. <laughs> uh, so we will get it eventually because it's kind of necessary but not yet <laughs> it's frustrating uh, instead we'll drop back down here and then, oh yeah there are still dudes oh he caught me this time oh it's just the spear guy how did you not get alerted by the spear guy aggro oh well handle this problem no issues whatsoever and move on with uh, creating the fountainhead aroma by heading to the gun fort we got the key from Kuro after we beat Genichiro at the top of Ashina Castle uh, that's gonna be our next destination and we'll get to it across this bridge but first there's another eavesdropping opportunity You're saying we don't have enough salt yes sir we use it for cooking, of course, but we also use it on wounds and for purifying the dead. So at the rate people are dying, we're out then? Yes, sir. That's why many on the battlefield are falling ill. I see. We'll need to find a way to get some salt then. That is actually more important than you realize. Uh, because it's a line of dialogue that you need to overhear for Aniyama the Peddler's side quest. He needs to be informed that there's a salt shortage. And they're talking about needing salt uh, for purification as they're looking off into the water. So let's see what's down here. It should give you a hint. Hard to see from here, but as soon as that pops up, you know there's another faceless, or headless, damn it. And he's a little bit of a problem. All of those items you see in the lake bed are just coin purses, I believe, or otherwise insignificant items. So that is our third headless that we've encountered, and we'll encounter number four pretty soon, actually. Four out of five. And it's the fifth one that we're finally going to throw down with. And then after that, we'll probably either stuff the other four into some kind of intermission or bonus video, or just do them off camera, because all of the fights are essentially the same, and they just drop uh, variations on the same type of item. 
it's essentially infinite use version uh, uh, versions of their respective sugars. And more of the interior ministry ninjas. But who killed them? It's the Tengu of Ashina, who we know to be Ishin. Ah, Sekiro. Who are... Hmm? <laughs> Ministry rats. They find a way in through every crack and crevice. There's always more of them to kill. By the way, Sekiro, have you mastered any secret techniques? Hmm. Hmm. Not quite yet, it seems. Cut them down, Sekiro. Every last one. Have you mastered? Mm, not cut them. When he asks us if we've mastered any secret techniques, what he's actually asking is, have we acquired any of the skills at the end of any of the esoteric text uh, skill trees? Once we get any of those final uh, skills at the end of the upgrade paths, he has something for us, and that'll be more or less the final step of his quest. So we are slowly but surely progressing everything. This is so close to that last one, um, but it will make more sense why these two uh, specific sculptor's idols are so close to each other once we get into I think, the end game. For now, it's mostly just convenience. And we recognize these gunmen. Or rather, these gunwomen. Uh, they are the sharp eyed Okami clan women. We encountered some of them in Ashina Depths before, including the Snake Eyes. Now, instead of continuing down the obvious path near the idol, we're going to come back here and work our way slowly along the cliff. Because there's always something cool hidden in the less obvious directions. Like a way back to uh, the Ashina outskirts, for instance. And we'll get the umbrella out. Here is something kind of cool. Normally, if you come here uh, first, before you go to the village, to a Mibu village, you don't get these encounters. But regardless of which location you do first, Somewhere along the way, you'll get these apparitions, these ghosts that haunt you. But they'll change depending on where you go to first, and where they come after you at will change. Like, if we do all this stuff first and then do Mibu Village last, uh, instead, you get haunted by a bunch of uh, Nightjar ninja. And you get... you encounter them as you approach Mibu Village instead of them coming at you here. So the order that you that you progress through the game in actually changes a few of the enemies you encounter. And this is going to be one of the main reasons why we came down here. You can already see the glowing sword through the darkness. It just pierces that veil of black. And that means... Headless number four. Unfortunately, he's not guarding anything super cool. Just some divine grass, and I believe that's a lump of grave wax, but we'll still get it. This is mostly for the sake of cataloging, uh, cataloging where they are for when we come back for them. Again, since all of them are the same fight, I'm just going to fight the final one that we encounter on screen and then either do the rest of them off screen or, you know, again, stuff them in a bonus episode or something like that.
So we're slowly building our list for areas that we have to backtrack to, to do something significant. And that's going to do it for now. Actually, we'll start that backtracking after we finish this main area. Thank you all for watching. Take it easy. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, ring the bell, and so on and so forth. Have a good one, y'all.